Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Floors, Labs and Columns using Back to Works 2019. Cat guru Jonathan Pickup is delivering another amazing tutorial on Back to Works 2019, all about floors, labs and columns, you heard it. And let me tell you a little bit about Jonathan. Jonathan is an architect trained in New Zealand and the, in the UK with more than 30 years of experience. He has been writing and producing Vectorworks manuals and providing customer support for more than 15 years. His company, Archon CAD, is the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. He also runs the Vectorworks online user group and provides its main directions. And now let me tell you a little bit about Novedge. Novedge is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at Novedge.com. And for more daily software news and promotions, visit us on the Novedge blog and follow us on social media. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and it will be recorded by me. And uh, later on, post on YouTube and Vimeo, just search for Novedge. And now, uh, I will stop talking and uh, pass the stage to Jonathan. Here we go. Thank you, Barbara. So today we're gonna to talk about floors, slabs, columns, and pilasters. So first of all, let's talk about floors and slabs because one of the things that we quite often think of as the floors being a horizontal object, and sometimes quite often people get confused between what is a floor and what is a slab? When should I use one and when should I use the other? The history of these is that the floor was available as a hybrid uh, object and giving us both 2D and 3D capabilities. If we draw a floor slab using an extrusion, we won't get the 2D graphic style, but if we draw it with a floor, it will. So let's start with drawing the floor. I'm going to copy around here. I could copy around these walls and it takes a little while for me to, to click around all these different things, so I need a quicker technique. What I'm going to do is to select all of those walls. A you see on the menu bar, and I'm going to create polys from walls. So if I choose to create a net area polygon, that's the inside, so it would create inside the wall, I'd still have to um, offset it, but if I create a gross area polygon, it'll actually create the two dimensional shape that I need. And that's a lot quicker than me trying to click on every corner as I go around. AEC, now I'm gonna use a floor object. So the floor object creates what's called a hybrid object. It's got partly 2D, partly 3D. The bottom Z for this is uh, minus 100 millimeters or minus four inches, and the thickness is the same, about four inches. So when I create that, what we should see is that my floor goes and sits on top of my walls. Now, of course, I've actually made my walls ahead of time. I've actually calculated them to be perfect, uh, and that works really well. So that is a floor object, but it's not the only reason I use a floor object. The other day for this, this is actually the, the floor slab. The, fun, the reason it's got a funny shape is it's an actual project that I'm working on. Um, so what was I making the other day was a cupboard, a vanity. So I made a floor, I made it 850 millimeters off the floor, I made it 50 millimeters thick, and it creates this little shape for me. If I wanted to create another one, I could, and you can duplicate one, so I'm just going to control click on it, and then I could stretch it by doing this, or I could do other things to it. So I'm going to uh, just stretch it a little bit, and this time I'm gonna change it. So the offset from the floor is going to be about um, 200 millimeters, and the thickness is 650. And what that should give me is two objects. And so sometimes I use a floor as a very quick and dirty uh, furniture building system. So let's have a look, what can we do? So we select this object and you notice that we've got the blue handle so I could stretch it maybe. But if I use my reshape tool, let me just find my reshape tool, there it is there. Grab the reshape tool. 
Let's have a look at my floor. I grab the reshape tool. Now you notice that nothing happens. So it still appears that I can't make any changes to it. If I start with my selection tool and double click, then I can see my original polygon. I go to my reshape tool and then I can reshape my floor. Now the problem with this is that I can't see the building that I used to create it. If I turn on my show other objects while in editing modes, then I can and I can then stretch my floor to match my building. So if I change my building, I have to enter my floor and then I can make changes to it. So one of my clients, or well, my client wants to have a lift in this area here. Uh, would you call it Barbara, an elevator? Yes. So I select those two things, right click and I go clip surface and I've just clipped a hole out of my floor. So we can edit the floor with the uh, by entering it by using add surface and clip surface. Uh, so let's put a little circle there, select both of those. Now the trick is you've got to right click on the the, uh, the 2D object that you drew, the planar object. Add surface. Now you notice it didn't work that time, so let's go back and we'll go back to a plan view. And now it works. So with a floor object you've really got to work in, in 2D or in top plan to do a lot of your editing. So, so far, any questions about floors so far? So that, because I think floors are reasonably simple, that's about all I'm going to do. Uh, so if there aren't any questions about floors, I'm going to move on. So floors, you draw the polygon, you create a floor object. If you want to edit it, you double click on it, that enters you into the floor space, and then you can edit the floor shape. You can add, use add surface and clip surface. So that's reasonably quick, I think. I'd like to spend a bit more time talking about slabs. Now the slab has a special tool to create a slab. Once we select our slab, we can then choose the type of slab that we want to use. And slabs are a little bit like walls. They have that component. They've got the ability to have a slab style. So let's have a look here. We've got a pop up where we can actually search for slabs. I could choose this one, I can choose my 100 millimeter. And where I live we have a, a slab which is a um, called a rib raft. It's a, comp it's a composite type slab. I'm just going to choose something simple. So now that I've got my slab type selected, I can then choose different parts. So I can choose whether I'm going to draw it by using the polygon and trace around. Again, could be slightly slow. Or I can use this other method, which is the picked walls mode. So I can actually pick the walls that I want. And so I don't have to be very careful about where I'm going. Vectorworks will actually recognize the joints in the walls. And I pick all the walls. I've made, I need to make a closed network. In other words, there needs to be closure. It has to start and finish at the same point. I can then click on the green tick or hit the enter key and that creates a slab for me. Now previously, I set up the slab to have specific colors on it or specific textures. So if you save those in your library, you can reuse those on project after project. We didn't look at texturing the uh, floor object, but we could have done, but it doesn't remember it. So if you go and create another floor, it doesn't always remember from job to job how you're going to create the floor objects. So that's my slab. If I want to change that slab for a different slab, I can replace it and I can replace one with another. Uh, my slab's over here. We then go, I want to replace it with that one, select it, OK. And there's something I keep getting a little noise making it. Oh, there it is. I didn't see this one. OK. So we're going to replace it and OK. So we can replace one with another. Now when we made the floor, we only had one choice and that was that the floor was set out, the elevation of the floor slab was set out by the underside of the floor. When we get to a slab, we have a lot more choices. So with a slab object, we actually get to choose how we're setting out our slab. Is it to the top of the slab? Is it to the bottom of the sand component? And all I need to do is to click here 
in this little datum column to choose whether it's the top of the component, the bottom of the component, or the bottom of this component. And this is huge flexibility because when I've got a lot of complex slabs, I don't like having to calculate where the underside of my object is because I, you know, I might want it to finish at a particular height, but the floor object is always measured to the underside, so I've got to do a lot of mental arithmetic. With this one, I don't have to. I want the top of my slab to be at a certain elevation. I can just go ahead and use it. So I can set my datum. I can also choose with a more complex slab, maybe a different datum. So let's go to this one. So do I want to set the elevation out by the concrete slab, by the insulation, by the sand? You know, I've got a lot of choices that I can use. So for me, the slab is for more complex objects. Sure, the floor is quick and dirty. The slab takes a bit more thought, a little bit more consideration. But if we're getting into the working drawings or the contract documents, you've got to use a slab. You can't just stick to a floor because as it gets more complex, plus I can add to the components like the insulation, the sand, and they'll show up on my sections. So are we all right with that? There's no questions so far. Um, so that's my slab object. So what does this do? Let's have a look at this using a clip cube. One of my favorite little toys. So there it is there, and you can see I'm rendering an OpenGL. If I select my slab and I'll replace that now, let's replace it with that simple one that I've got. Um, let's look at my current file. Select that. So just keep your eye on the thickness of the slab, it should change. So you can see once you've got your slab stored, it's really quick. So when we create a floor, we can't bind a floor to a level, but we can bind a slab to a level, I think. Let's just have a look. Go to here, there's my floor there. So if I select that floor, um, here I can choose the layer elevation. So I could change, if I've got levels in my slab, I can actually say, I want to bind this to my baseboard. I don't know if you noticed, but my floor actually went up a little bit. My baseboard is about 156 inches above the slab. I can set it to the bottom of my cladding. <laughs> that looks funny, doesn't it? Because um, now I've got this little ridge running around. So that's kind of handy being able to set it to being able to bind your slab to those levels because if you bind a slab to the to the levels James uh, who would ask that oh Mark so Mark if you bind the slab to a level of course when you update the level the slab will update automatically you can't change a floor or an extruded object to a slab but if you've uh, what you can do James if you've got an extrudes object and you want to make it into a slab, so I'll just extrude this. Now, you can't make that into a slab, but if I select it, you'll notice, if I double click on it, you'll notice that I've got the original shape. So I can copy that shape, exit the object, delete that, paste in place. So I can use uh, paste in place. So I've copied my little shape. I can then go paste in place, and then I can make that into a slab using create objects from slabs. And there's a little dialog box over here. So let's make it a slab object. And there it is, it's using whatever settings I've got. So you can't directly create, so James, you can't directly copy an extrusion into a slab, but you can copy the original shape and use that. So James, uh, sorry, Rob, I just need to read your question a little bit more carefully. I don't think I understand it. Do the original styles change for future projects when we don't duplicate and rename them? Well, if you don't do anything to them, if you don't change them, the original styles just stay the way they are, but you can create extra styles. I wasn't gonna look too much at, at styles. Let me bring my resource manager over. Um, but if we have to, we will. I'll, I'll just, but let's just carry on with this. So let's get rid of the clip cube. So one of the things that we can do with a slab object is, so we looked at, um, 
I need to give this the more complex one. I'm going to replace this with uh, a rib raft slab, I think. Let's find my favorites. Let's find my ones and that one. And I'm going to delete all of my walls because I want to show you what, what it looks like without the walls. So we delete all those. And that's good, that's what I wanted. And we want to have, cool. Okay, so we've got now the different components. Now the reason I've got the inset is because I had the original walls there and it, uh, my slab is linked to those walls. So if we have a look at this and we have a look at our components, uh, let's convert that to an unstyled slab and we'll have a look at our components. So what we find with our slab components is that we can bind the edges of the slabs to different parts. So outer face of wall, inner face of wall, that'll have a huge impact on the graphic style of our different slabs. But what I'd like to show you is this ability when we do a, and uh, didn't I say that we needed an, an I keep remember, forgetting, elevator is it? Got an elevator in this corner here. We have our slab, we right click, and this time we go clip surface. But Vectorworks is now saying, well, wait a minute, do you want to subtract this from the entire slab? In other words, make a hole all the way through. So let's go, okay, yes, and I'll undo that. Let's do that again. This time, I only want to cut through a part of it. So I don't want to cut through the foundation, I just want to cut through my slab topping, and you'll notice it's just cut through a small portion or, or through one component of my slab. So if you have a slab with multiple components, we can actually cut through just the part that we want. So let's say for example, this is a coffered ceiling and we're gonna have a several of these. Uh, we just wanna put one there. And every time I hit the option key, it's jumping out around. That's what I want. And I want to create a coffered slab. It's all right, just today it's fighting with me as to which one it's selecting. So that's what I want. So I've just put a couple there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select everything. I'm going to clip surface this time. Oh, there's a few, there's an, of course I've got my skylight and my sun, haven't I? So let's go right click this time. Let's clip surface this time. What I'm gonna do is to cr create the cut or just take it away from my foundation. Now you won't see much at the moment. So let's go our clip cube again and we'll pull this through. So what we should see is you can see the thickness of my slab and now you can see the coffers in the inside of my slab. So if I cut a section through this as a building, I'll actually see the, the beams and the coffers, or the beams and the insulation as it really is in, in the 3D. But I'll be able to see those. And there you can see I've got all those little holes cut through. So I'm gonna take several steps back to get back to my slab, because I, I don't want to have that. Uh, I can't go back because now I've lost all my walls. So I'm just going to have to redraw my walls. I really wanted them back. Um, so what are some of the other things? Let's put this back to replace. I'm going to put this back to a, just a regular slab object. Okay. So one of the other things I can do is I can use the slab to create things like steps. So let's say, for example, the client needs to get into the house. We need a couple of steps through here. And I'm going to make that into a slab. So AC and create objects from shapes. So you're a slab and here you're a slab as well. So I've got a couple of slab objects. Now all I need to do is to change the elevation of those. So that's minus 300 and this one's minus 150, so minus 12 inches, minus six inches. And so that gives me the steps. So the, the slabs are just as flexible sometimes as floors because um, 
I can I can change the height, I can change all that kind of thing. Is there a wall from a slab tool? I'm not sure. There, someone's asking, is there a wall from a slab? Um, I can fit walls to objects. I can create walls from spaces. But I'm not sure about creating a, a wall from a slab. Okay, so there's partly. So the other thing I'd like to show you is how do we edit this? So if I go back to a plan view and I double click on my slab, I get this dialog box. So what do I want to edit? Do I want to in, in, edit the boundary? Do I want to edit the modifiers? Reshape, manual inches or drainage? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a look at drainage later. So if I go boundary, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got the orange border. I've actually jumped inside my slab object. I can also use my reshape tool and I can grab hold of my reshape tool and I can move it with the reshape. Now, if the walls were still there, I really need to have the walls there. So uh, Barbara, I'm going to have to um, at some point jump and, and restore my view, which is going to show us a whole lot of things I didn't want, but I might have to do that later, come back and okay. do it. But when I move my walls, my slab, when it's connected to my walls, will automatically update, which is really powerful. Uh, maybe I should just draw a couple of simple walls and do it that way. So wall tool, there's my walls. Uh, I've turned that class off, so I need to turn the class back on. I should check that, shouldn't I really? Um, let's have a look at my classes. Is there a wall class turned off? External, let's turn it back on. The reason I didn't want to turn that back on is because I've got a whole lot of walls there that I didn't want to, I didn't want to show because in preparation I turned them all off. Okay, so those are gone. Let's draw some simple walls. And we'll create a slab from those. So if they are selected, go to create a slab. We can do that again, the picked walls, we can use the inner boundary, we can trace around, and I'm just gonna pick those. So let's just make sure we pick them. Being selected or not doesn't help. We have to, we have to actually pick them. So if I grab my walls now, and I move them, so where's my wall? Is that my wall? The slab updates, which means that if you connect your slab to your walls and then you update your walls, they will update, which is really powerful. So let's get rid of all those because I don't need them anymore. So how do you edit a slab? Well, if you move the walls, the slab will edit automatically. I've shown you how you can punch a hole in a part of it. Um, we can also look at manual edge offsets. So there's a dialog box, I'll just bring that over. So let's have a look. We've got edge one, which is over here, edge two, three, four, five. That's the one I want. Let's have an offset here and we'll make that zero, see what happens. So you notice when I do my edge offset at zero, it's pushed that edge of the slab back, but not the other one. Let's do that again. Let's look at edge, was it edge eight? Yep. So let's make that 24 inches, 600 millimeters. And so now that edge comes out. Now that edge is still connected to my wall if, it, if I've used the walls. So when I move the wall, the edge offset still goes with it. So if I wanted to have my edges offset by you know, a quarter of an inch for my construction, I could do that. So that would be quite cool. Now it looks like we've got a few questions, Barbara, so I better stop and have a look at them. Um, so I'm just going to hide the questions. Is that all right, Barbara, if I just hide the questions that that's, we've got? That's fine. Cool. So let's just, uh, everything's good. Uh, can both floors, can both floors and slabs be under levels? I think I've answered that one. I've answered, can I change a floor to a slab? Can you offset the uh, component along the perimeter? So you can offset the, the edge. What happens when you define the slab? So what I've done so far is I've offset the entire slab edge. 
But when you create a slab, you actually create a slab and you can tell Vectorworks which part of the wall to, to connect to. So if I've got a complex wall with several components, let's just have a look at those settings. So here my concrete slab, when I look at the options for this, I can have this connected. So this is connecting to a wall. So I can have it connected to the inner face of the wall, the outer face of the inner component, the inner face of the core, the center of the core, the outer face of the core, or I can offset it there as well. So that's very powerful, this ability to con connect your wall to a slab, but also then offset it. So that should be that answer. Um, do the original styles change for future products? I, I prefer to keep a library of, of slab styles, ones that I know work. Then if I need to make a change, I will make a change to it. And I will, um, if I need to, to save it in my library, I will give it a different name. If it's just for this project, I won't bother renaming it. I'll just edit it but it won't go back and update my library. It'll only be in the one file that I've made those changes to it. I hope that answers your question, Robert. When I address the original style to the story levels, does the style remember this for few projects? Only in this file. Um, so, and it, it only remembers it for that slab, I think. So let's go back to the slab. I, let's go back here the insertion options. So you'll you'll see here under the insertion options, here where you do the layer, uh, the delta, the datum layer Z reference. If you set your style up and you say, always connect to my slab level and save that as a style, it will remember it in this project only. If you save it to your library, it'll remember it in your library for future projects. What do you think, Robert? Does that answer your question? So Robert, one of the things that um, I suggest is that clients make sure that they have, or you as, a, as the designer, make sure that you have a library of slab styles, wall styles, have a library where you store the things that you really need to, to reuse. And I, I know in Vectorworks that the recommended way is you store slab styles in the correct folder. I'm too lazy for that. I just have a single file with all of my slab styles stored in. If you look at my resource manager, I have a, a library and my library has slab styles somewhere. It says in my slab styles are in this file. My wall styles are in here as well. My worksheets are in here. My electrical fixtures are in here, my toilets and doors and everything. So everything is just in one one massive file. And to me, that's a real easy way to keep track of everything. Okay. Um, so when we adjust this, that's cool. Uh, Stephen's asking, is there, a sl is there a wall from slab tool? I don't think there is, Stephen. I was having a look when you asked that question earlier. Um, I could try, let's try create objects from shapes. No, it doesn't work. Um, you can create walls from a polygon. So you could perhaps get the polygon out. So I should be able to use that and go create walls from, yeah, so I should be able to select that and go create objects from shapes, and then I could choose walls, but it's not actually what you asked for, Stephen, you asked for from slab, and it doesn't do it. If I create a poly from a slab, but then create walls from polys, that's the answer. Uh, you could create the poly, or I could just um, select it. Don't forget, let's just turn on our rendering. Stephen, don't forget, that you could use your 3D tool. There's a great little option here in 3D called Extract. I don't know if you guys use this much. I use this a lot. Uh, the Extract tool allows me to create planar objects. So I can click on that object and go OK. And that should give me a polygon. Now I know my object info palette says slab locked. Oh, it still thinks it's looking for things. Let's go back to I'm having trouble going back to my selection tool. 
there it is. Just give me a fight at the moment, Barbara. There it is. So there's my selection tool. And I don't know what's going on with my computer at the moment, but I'm getting the little spinny wheel thing. And when I'm moving, so as I'm moving my cursor around, it seems to be taking ages to find the tool that I want. I don't know if you notice, Barbara, but it's selecting all the different tools. Yes. I've had this problem before and I don't know what, maybe I need to restart my Vectorworks, but it, better cut this bit out of the movie, I think. <laughs> so what, are, what were the other questions? Um, can those two steps be merged with the slab? The, well, no. The two slabs are individual. You can't have those steps in the slab because a slab is a, is a horizontal object. If you want to have them look like they're a single object, then just use a simple stair. Uh, Stephen said he's had this problem since he upgraded to Mojave. Stephen, I up, um, up, updated my RAM and it was great until I did this, until I just did that um, that thing. It's been working really well until I did that thing. Okay, is it? Uh, let's have a look. What are the other questions? Uh, can those two steps be merged? No, let's get rid of that question. Uh, if I understand you well, you can use these with cavity walls and locate it on the inner cavity. Yes, you can. Um, so the, uh, sorry, I'm not sure what your first name is, but your question was, if I understand it well, you can use these good with cavity walls and locate it on the inner boundary. So you can actually locate each individual component relative to the bound to the wall. So for example, if you have um, a brick construction, you can have one component stop on the inner face of the cavity, and you can have another component stop on the other on the outer face of the wall, giving you the, the step down that you need in cavity wall construction. Uh, so we've now got the polygon, it's, it's stopped thinking. So now we can go create objects from shapes. We can create walls from that shape. And it should create the walls that I've chosen. Uh, 15 walls, uh, let's make that to the layer wall height. And so Stephen, there's a quick solution for you. Use the extract tool to extract that shape and then use it to create the walls. How are we going for time, Barbara? Is it time for us to look at um, columns, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that. Have we got any other questions about that? Um, I tend to name styles for current projects with unique names. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so Robert, if you're using names for current projects with unique names, don't forget to fill in the information so that when you use it as a BIM pro project, that you're actually getting or instructing all that information out. And then you can, of course, you can use it with that tag tool. I don't know if anyone knows what Robert's talking about with this tag tool, but I've been using this tag tool lately. It is really powerful and, and I've been using it a lot. Okay, so that's probably enough. Let's get on to columns. So columns, where's my column tool? Back to my wall tool, I'll just get that out of the way. Column, there's my column. Let's have a look. I can stick my column on the layer plane. I can use automatic working planes. And there's a column and I'm going to make some changes to it. So let's have a look at the column object. We've got settings for the column object. It can use architectural, it can use structural, it can use both architectural and structural. So let's start with architectural. So let's say for example, we know what height we want, but this can also be bound to layers or levels. I don't know if anyone wants to do this, but you can actually bind your columns to levels. So top of the story of the story above, it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna use layer wall height. Layer elevation, layer wall height. So if I use layer wall height, at least it's bound by my store, by my layers. And if I update my layer, it'll do that. We can also choose the finishes. I've got a dialog box here and I've got classes I'm using for my structural columns. So I've preset all of these for this presentation. So I've got a 
a base finish, a shaft finish, a capital, and a, I've used classes for all those parts. So let's just go okay. Uh, let's just make sure we've got a capital and a base, and the base width is 900, 900, base height 300. Okay, and we'll put one of those in. So there's my, there it is. That's my column, and the reason it's got the concrete and the timber is because my class is a preset. So I can also then start to say, well, what would I like that to be? Would I like that to have some form of taper to it? And here under my shaft, I can say that it's got straight taper. I can also make it circular. I can give it a classic taper, so it bows out a little bit in the middle. I can save these. So I can save this, I can make a new style for this, I can replace it with a style that I've already got. I've got a timber pile. So you can save the styles and then you can replace them. So where I live, we do a lot of timber construction and we have to put the timber in the ground and we encase it in concrete, which is kind of, uh, kind of a fun thing to do. So let's put a bunch of those out and I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to duplicate array, I'm going to use a rectangular array, five columns. There we are. So there's a bunch of those things. And I'd like all of these to fit to my, to my site model. Now I don't think I've got my site model turned on yet, so let's just have a look, we'll turn on my site model. So now you can see I've got a site model, I've got all my columns, and we're going to, um, do something to those. But just before we just before we move on to that, let's go back to our column tool, put one of those in. So what sort of things do we want to do with a column? So we can have a column with a base, we can have it without a base. One of my students called it a column like this without a base and called it baseless, which um, I guess is accurate, but it just sounded funny to me. Um, so the height is, 2400 measured to the wall, I can then make it tapered. So when I go structural only, I can now have a structural element to that. So you notice I've got a, a beam there, so I, I choose what kind of structural component I've got, concrete, wood, steel. If I have steel, I can select my steel shape. I can use one of my universal ones, I can use a, a smaller one. This is, there we are. So I've chosen a, a steel column, a UC universal column. And I can also say that I want both architectural and structural. And then I can choose the architectural bit that goes around it. I can choose a structural bit as, as well. I can put those two bits on different classes and um, I should be able to turn them off individually so that some drawings can show the structural, some drawings can show both. So I think that's enough on the columns. Oh, I realize this row is sitting out in the middle of nowhere, so I'll just get rid of them. So have we got any questions about columns? All right, so let me select, I'm gonna use my select similar tool. If you guys are not using this, you really should. It's really powerful. So it's selected all of those. So Stephen, any ideas what I'm gonna do next to get these to fit to my site model? AC, terrain, and center surface. So that'll set my objects onto my site model. Now I've actually created a 600 millimeter, 24 inch base to that. So I'm going to move those in 3D. I'm gonna leave an inch sticking up. Now I thought that this was kind of a cool trick because if you have a look at it, what we've got is the columns are all sitting exactly in the right place which is kind of neat because they're all sitting exactly on my site. Now the problem is that the tops of my columns are not sitting in the right place. So I'm gonna turn these, I'm going to uh, convert all those to unstyled columns. And here where it's got the top offset, I'm gonna set the top offset to be enough. So I've gotta have an inch for the timber floor. I'm gonna have uh, four inches for my joists and six inches for the other one. So that's minus 11 inches. So minus 11 inches. 
And now you'll notice that the tops of all of my columns are lining up, so I could actually just use this structurally. And I did this once with a really complex uh, timber floor structure project, and it was so quick. So it's center surface, and then just adjust the top offset. If I make it zero, they'll all line with the top of my slab. It's a really cool trick. And they just work because, because it's easy. So that's my column trick. Uh, I presented this the other day to my clients. They wanted to turn these into a retaining wall. I just made them circular. I took away the, the base at the bottom, made them circular. So instead of rectangular, I made them ovals, made them slightly bigger so that they could uh, be a retaining wall. So about 320. 12 inches and then I could use that along my along this part of my site as a retaining wall. So we've got some more questions by the look of it Barbara. Um, what information transfers with a native document that you might send to someone? Libraries are not sent any any resources you use in your current file they go if you send someone your file. We often work with raft slabs that have 175 thick. Now the, the 45 degree from the base of the footing is not possible um, unless, you, oh, yes, it is possible. Let me show you how we could do that. Uh, it's not possible in the way that you thought, that's all, but it is possible to do some of that. So let me uh, just put the questions over here. Uh, I'll come back. Let me go back to the slab, so I'm going to hide some of these things. So let's hide that, and I'm going to select all of these and delete them. And I'm going to change this back into a simple slab. So I'm going to replace it with something that's really simple if I can find one. I think I had one that was really simple to start with. That one. In fact, I'm going to go to the components and convert it to an unstyled slab. I'm going to remove a component because I don't want the sand. So I've now got a simple component. So let's have a look at other ways of editing our slab. So I know that my client wants to have a shower in this area here. And that shower wants to be about two inches deep. So I need to take out two inches from my slab in order to, um, well, that's weird. It should be totally thickness. But let's say, for example, my client wants to have a, sh a shower set down. So I need to uh, cut this little bit out. So if I create a 3D object, I can go subtract 3D object from slab. And there's my shower set down. And if I wanted to add something, so someone wanted to add a bit to this, so I could do a, a slab, something here. Let's put that down there, and I could go add 3D object to slab and add it to my slab. So I could do that. So someone was asking whether it's possible to have a plinth or have a, a boundary wall, and it is possible. So I'm just going to undo that. So if you used extrude along a path, you could do that. So I'm going to get my object there. I'm only going to do it in a small area because it means teaching you how to use extrude along a path, which I quite often find is confusing. Oh, we've got the spinny wheel again. Right, so let's hope it doesn't stay there. Um, so what we want is we want to have a piece that does this with a 45 degree angle, then it comes down to there and across. Now I started my object here and I went this way around. So hopefully I've drawn this in the right direction. If not, I'm just going to uh, make changes to it. So AEC and we're going to go uh, note model, straight along path. Okay, let's have a look at it. So going the right direction, it's going the right direction. But what I do need to do if I double click on this, I'm going to edit the profile because what I need is I need this corner 
to be at that point there. This where this red and green line intersect, that's where my path meets my profile. So now that I've got that, select my slab, add those together. And I've now got my 45 degree slab set down. So that's the other way you can do it. Now the downside of this is if I do slab offsets, my extra longer path doesn't move and I've got to go back and fix it manually. So I think that answers that question. Um, yeah. Working with, when working with stories in a structure has multiple ceiling heights per story, is the way for slabs to achieve this. Yeah, if it was multiple ceiling heights, you could use uh, components for the different heights, or it might be better just to draw different ceilings if they're, if they're really dramatically different. Is it possible to create a column with a plinth and make the plinth have a cant brick on top? I don't think it is. I think the columns are really pretty basic when you create them. When we go to the column here, uh, let's have a look at the base. The base is rectangular, it's oval. Uh, it's got a base height, 300. It's got a base corner radius, let's make that 50. And you see it's gone that way around. So if I make that 200, it just rounds those corners off. We give it two divisions, it puts a little gap in the middle. But if you really want to make the column quite complex, I think you're going to have to do some 3D modeling. So I've shown you my trick with the column. How are we getting on for time, Barbara? We've got a little bit of time. Yeah, we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes to go. Cool. So we've done our slab set down. We've done our columns with the sitting to the surface. Um, so now what do we need? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert this file. So this is what it looked like when I was going to get started. So let's get rid of these objects here and we'll talk about what they are. So we've looked at columns. What we haven't looked at is this one here called the pilaster. So the pilaster looks a little bit like a column stuck to a wall. So it has similar options, architectural, structural, architectural and structural. We have bases and capitals. We can use the finishes, so we can assign them to the same classes for the finishes. And we can have, we can uh, taper the shaft. We can use center marks. We can have a base and a capital. But this is quite interesting that you can actually link these to the height of the wall. So I'm gonna notice the my wall highlights. I click. Make sure I've got it on the right side. You may not notice, but that's on the wrong side of the wall. So I'm going to delete that and do it in plan view. It's easier to see it. So I'm looking at the face of the wall. Click which side do I want it to go. And there they are. Now if I move the wall, those pilasters move as well. So they're kind of fun because they stick to the wall. They move with the wall. If I change the height of the wall, they change as well, so they're connected to the wall. If I move the wall, they move. <clears throat> and they can look like a wall thickening. So I did think you could use these, turn off the base, uh, turn off the capital, and you could use that as a just as a thickening. So if I choose this and I choose the shaft is using the wall component, and I can't remember which one of these I used, maybe it was the cladding class, then it ends up looking the same, so it looks like a, a, a pier or a thickening in the wall, and that could work quite well uh, when you're trying to describe to, you know, to someone that you want a bit of thickening in the wall. You really want the plane view to look the same, so we could put that into the same component, so wall, component, and that's frame, I think, and we might, so it says here that it's actually using the, the same 
class and colors, but we don't actually see it. And what would be the other thing? I don't know if anyone noticed before when I had a, I thought it might make a, a, a quick and dirty fireplace, a chimney. So it's an unstyled wall. It's got no capital. It's got no base. It's going to be on that same class again. So shaft is wall component cladding. Only this time I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So the shaft width, I'm going to make about four feet. And I'm going to stop using the wall height. I'm going to give it a much higher. And I'm going to give it a taper. And the taper, I just need to be careful. So let's go and make that like that. And that's a little bit small for me. So I'm going to make that 600. And so I thought you could do that, Stephen, as a real quick and dirty sort of fireplace type thing. Someone wants to know whether you can um, set the pilasters so that they've got even spacing. And I think that might be using, I haven't used it for a while. Duplicate symbol and wall might work with that. No symbol is selected. So, oh, right, I thought I might be able to use that with this one here and then copy them along. I can't think of it. I can't think of a, a way to space these unless I go like that. Align. Maybe if I have three of those, let's create another one along here. And we'll select all three. I haven't tried this, so I don't know whether it's going to work, but could we distribute horizontally? No, oh, there you are. So Josh, you can, if you want to, um, you could use the move. So the move by points tool, this one here. So you could move one of those and you could have a, a regular spacing. You could have them distributed that way, I suppose. Have three of them from there to there. And it's copied a whole bunch of them because I had a whole bunch selected. So you, there's several ways you could do it, but I was really thinking that you might want to put one at one end and put one at the other and then distribute them evenly. And that would be probably one of the things I would want to do, do that and then, but distribution works. So you could do that. Does that help Josh? Does that answer the, uh, yeah, so I can set that. Oh, so that, so that when you stretch the wall, they adjust the spacings. I don't think so. Um, could we do that? I don't think you can. I could set it so that when you stretch the wall, that the, the space, this end remains the same, but I don't think you can do what you're asking. But I think, Barbara, it's probably time to wrap up, isn't it? Yeah. We've covered most of the things. Yeah. So the only thing I was going to show people is that I covered this recently on a webinar. I give monthly webinars where every month we cover a different topic. Next month it's going to be how to build your own library. And that's all through my website. So part of my website is that I've created this knowledge base. And so if we wanted to look up columns, Let's have a look. I think we've got something on columns and pilasters. So all the information that I've got, I've actually placed here on my um, on my website, on my knowledge base. And so what I've done is I've, this is a new thing, this knowledge base. And I've taken all the information that I've created and put it into one really easy to search location. So if we want to look up library, I think I've got libraries here already. Where's it? Libraries resource manager and creating libraries. So this is what we're going to go through next month. And I've placed all my information about how I create libraries, what the default content is, where I put my tool libraries, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of information there about, um, basically this website's got everything I know. And I think it's well worth uh, the money. Um, and this month we're going to update this introduction to the resource manager. 
at this. If you're looking at my website, please use Chrome, don't use Safari. The movies don't always play in Safari, but they always play in Chrome. So that's about it. Barbara, I think that's everything from me. Great. So do yourselves a favor and invest in some good training with Jonathan. You, It's the best investment you can do for yourself, as you can see from this uh, live demo. I mean, you made it look so easy. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I'm mm. sorry. One of the things, I, one of the things I liked about my knowledge base was just how easy it is to find what you're looking for. And I've divided it up into bits. Yes, it's all very yeah. easily, uh, you know, uh, described and easy to find. All the information are there and um, check it out. And thank you for attending today. Thank you for spending an hour with us. I want to remind you to visit Novage, where you can find uh, the entire line of Vectorworks product. Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and no headaches. So remember, novage.com. And you can find us on all the social media, the one last thing, I want to remind you that I've been recording this session, so if you uh, want to watch it again, and I don't blame you, so many the, were the information, you can go on our YouTube channel and Vimeo channels. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Jonathan. This was fantastic. Have a great rest of Thank the you. day. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.